Hi, everybody. Welcome to Blow the Bonnet. I'm Michael Caruso and David Reynolds and AVL join us here as usual. But we today we've got a very, very special guest. Oh, I'm actually who's coming? <laughs> I can't believe you've actually made it in. Tony Cochran, thank you for joining us. Oh, pleasure. I think b- before abs- we start, I think you've taken the cake for the best shoes on this couch. Yeah, you've actually. How would you describe them? <laughs> it's uh, like a Louis Vuitton yeah. blue handbag shoe. It is, yeah. It's a Louis Vuitton it, yeah, uh, yeah. blue handbag shoe. See, <laughs> that's what it says on the side. Really? See, my girlfriend, I know fashion. Yeah, well, she you gives clearly me shit do. all the time. <laughs> clearly do. What are yours? Uh, I don't even know. No, Lacoste. Some, Lacoste. Lacoste. That little crocodile. Right? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> little brothel creeper. <laughs> <laughs> it's kicked off in the right yeah. way. Well, it's what we it's do. got a way to a healthy start anyway. Well, welcome to Melbourne. Yeah. Uh, you, um, you must be excited to be back down the south, down in uh-huh. Mexico. I love Melbourne. <laughs> <laughs> Why is Mate, it so boring? We're the sporting capital of Australia. So a sporting capital of the world, I read. Re- oh, well, it's self-proclaimed. Ca- if you've read it, it's true. Well, that's right. If it's in a paper, it's got to be true. That's a very good point, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> now, Tony, you're a very busy man. Um, the chairman of uh, the Gold Coast Suns. I am, yes. You're the Has chairman of OzX uh, Open. Open. I am. That's a tick. That's two for two. <laughs> two for two. <laughs> he's done his homework, hasn't he? Yeah, he has. He's, done, you're a director. he's had a researcher, obviously. <laughs> yeah, director of international events consulting i am that's also what? true <laughs> and I, i'm also a director of cochrane entertainment so there you go there's a Who, what do you entertain what, anybody i can <laughs> <laughs> are you, you're keeping yourself pretty busy what, how, how many hours of sleep are you getting these days no no i, I get plenty of sleep I, I enjoy i look i love being busy i can't imagine you know life not being busy so um uh try and take on a new project every year Maybe two if I get greedy. Really? Wow! Um, because I really like doing shit. You know, I hate sitting around being bored, and I like to get out there and ruffle feathers and have a crack and upset people and upset myself. <laughs> and <laughs> Jeez, you, you, you sound a little bit like us, by the way. Yeah, we, we love upsetting people. Yeah, I was going to say, who, who have we upset this year? That's one of our. You certainly things. succeed. Yeah, don't, I know. you Just certainly succeed. Don't so don't let there be any misunderstanding on this point. Absolutely not. I love upsetting people. Only my only like thing got is fined. Like, Didn't you get I, fined twenty five thousand dollars or something for upsetting people? I did. What do you think about that? Oh, I think it's a load of shit. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why couldn't you be running the running the show back then? Would have saved me some money. <laughs> uh, well, I would have. I remember, actually. I remember. Um, I can't remember. It was something equally as stupid. Marcus Ambrose, I, th- I think it was, got fined for standing on the pit wall three thousand oh, dollars. That's right. When, when he, he won a race, so I just wrote the check for him. That's amazing. Oh, that was the most ridiculous thing ever. I mean, the, the, you know, they, these things you do for the fans and you get fined for it. I mean, hello? Yeah. Well, these days we always talk about burnouts. So we yeah. get a three grand, three grand fine for burnouts if you do it before turn one. But after turn one, it's okay. Yeah, well, that... It's stupid. Yeah, you go, but, and turn one is... Before turn one is generally where the people are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you might so around turn one, you, do you don't see it anyway, yeah. so... I think yeah, you but, can actually still get a fine at Bathurst if you hang over. I think, didn't they warn... Um, this is Stephen Richards. A oh, there's years a great ago photo of Richo like right, right out, out over the uh, over the they, thing. But they're great fine. photos. Like that's mm. all part of the narrative of the sport. You know, like it's yeah. If you can't do that, part of the rich shame. tapestry mm. of the sport. Rich yeah. tapestry. <laughs> you come from marketing, don't you? Marketing background. <laughs> no one's actually ever worked out where I come from. <laughs> so let's, let's not get into that because this could be a very long session. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've been in the entertainment industry since the 70s. Oh, Is shit. that right? Yeah, yeah, unfortunately. Where'd you start out? Where'd you start out? Yeah. yeah. I started out in lighting. I was, um, so school and I really never got on. Um, we society. had a symbiotic relationship. I hated school and school hated me. And um, I started a little lighting business in Adelaide um, doing entertainment lighting. And that's where I started out when I was uh, sort of not quite 16 years of age. And I left school and carried on with that and built that up and one day sold that out and got into the promoting side of entertainment initially, then slipped from entertainment into sport and sort of been doing that all my life. So 40 yeah, years yeah. later, I haven't advanced. I'm still doing the same <laughs> shit. <laughs> you must be doing all right out of it, though. I mean, well, what's all right? I mean, I just enjoy being involved and having a crack, you know, and I'm a great believer in if you just keep pushing and keep trying and make things happen, you'll make money. So I don't 
sort of necessarily set out, you know, my goal isn't to I want to make money. a big shit pile of money and that. My goal yep. is all those to start. So I mean, V8 Supercars was a good example. It was Group A Touring Cars when I came along. Um, there was, you know, no comprehension on day one that it, we could make it what we made it. But and, yeah, you bought it for 52000 I didn't actually buy well, it. The story really that's true is that I started the concept... I was running the Gold Coast Indy because that was a debacle and I turned that around financially for the Queensland government. And I was observing all these motorsport things going on. And my great mate, or one of my great mates at that time, was Barry Sheen. Right. And Sheeny, you know, um, we had done a couple of the bike Grand Prix together when it went belly up in New South Wales. So Sheeny and I were quite close. He lived on the Gold Coast. And... Um, I had this great concept that, you know, motorsport all over the world is making all this money. It's so big and it's so, you know, got so much going for it. God, the Australian thing must be huge because, you know, uh, Group A touring cars used to come to the Gold Coast as a support category. Yeah. Uh, and so I thought, you know, this is all really interesting. So I got really involved and I, I actually ended up attending a lot of events in sort of just as being a, almost like a fan, yeah, okay. writing up a white paper on what I thought needed it needed and needed to change. and um, How big was this paper? It ended up, it's quite a few pages. Have you still got it? And probably, yeah, my file somewhere That'd would be, be cool, there yeah. somewhere. It would be pretty cool now, I guess. But what happened was um, uh, I was at IMG in those days and uh, so I was doing it on their time uh, and they were paying the tab for me to get around and and what have you, they really couldn't give a shit about it. You know, there was no great, you know, people were saying, oh, this is fascinating, Coco. What's it? Where's this going to go? <laughs> yeah, what's um, in it for us? <laughs> what's in it for us, yeah. Um, anyway, um, right around that same time, so I convinced the then team owners at a very famous meeting um, in uh, John Crennan's uh, boardroom in uh, the old HSV, which was out here in some Rayhurst Street, <laughs> one, one two five Rayhurst Street, Clayton. Well, there you go. Um, I used to pull up there every day. <laughs> and, and yeah, so I convinced all these guys. It was Larry Perkins and Dick Johnson and Wayne Caddick and uh, oh, the, Ross Stone. Jimmy might have been there as well, possibly. I can't remember. Obviously, John Crennan was there. Um, uh, Freddie Gibson, Bob so Forbes, Bob Forbes, definitely yep. Bob Forbes. Uh, I think Possibly Neil Crompton too, because actually it was Cromley who got me into this. Oh, was it? Shit it's, all fight his fault. it's all his fault. <laughs> so everybody out there who can't stand me, blame Neil Crompton. Um, so um, anyway, I convinced them all, let's form a Vesco, which was an acronym. I'd come up with the name V8 Supercar because it was a much better marketing name than Group A touring cars, which sounded like a blood disorder. So, um, so. Off we went with uh, with that, and then I left IMG, and that created World War Four because uh, the teams wanted to go with me, and they could tell that nobody at IMG knew anything about motorsport to speak of, and so the agreement that my new partners at SEL and I formed with uh, IMG at the time was we would pay the expense money of what I'd spent on the research, which was $52,500 roughly. So that's oh. why the concept came about that uh, for $52,000 I bought into what became V8 Supercar and which 17 years later we sold out for a valuation of $305 million. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, it was a great ride. I enjoyed it. Well, I enjoyed big parts of it and then towards the end it got really shitty and unpleasant and wasn't much fun. So Why is that? Ah, uh, I didn't. I, it wasn't so much I disliked the new owners. I disliked some of the people that came with the new owners, who have now all gone, by the way, as well. And then I had a huge blue over. Um, they promised me they'd leave me to run it how I'd been running it because I hadn't done a bad job, um, taking it to thirty-four million EBITDA, uh, and. Um, I had pretty much constructed a new TV deal with the Seven Network, which was, a, well, I think, in our last... We are at the end of the five-year deal of the, the Seven Network TV deal, which I think was at $28 million, and I had... Was this the end of 2012? This was, yes, yeah, yeah. correct. Because um, I finished up in September of 2000 and 
2012. Mm -hmm. I think that's right. And um, I had constructed a new deal with Bruce McWilliam from the Seven Network for a new deal in the mid to high 30s, yep. which is a pretty good uplift. And um, the a couple of geniuses um, who were running the, our part of the business that... Uh, uh, the new owners in those days, um, they brought in a new CEO, much to my displeasure, um, uh, a guy named David Malone, and um, he had a much bigger concept of what he could sell the TV rights for, and and uh, he and I and uh, the guys from Archer had a altercation over it, yep. and so something had to give. And they were convinced that David Malone was the bright new thing of the future and Tony Cochran was the old flog from the past. The dinosaur. I was a dinosaur. <laughs> so um, uh, I got pushed out the door virtually and um, walked away. Um, so it wasn't much fun at the end. But I, unfortunately, for, unfortunately for the V8s, um, uh, Great for me because I was vindicated, but unfortunately you know, the TV deal was a debacle and it ended up being sixteen million dollars under Jeez. their tutelage. And as Not you bad. know, for two years it went yeah, through it absolute shit. Yeah, it was hell. Uh, so it went backwards. What's that? Nine million or so dollars a year for those two years, and uh, all of which I unfortunately saw coming and couldn't do anything about it. It was like trying to stop a train wreck. You know, I could see the train wreck unfolding, but no one wanted to listen to me. So. I got marginalised by um, the then board and uh, the then um, guys who were with Archer who were all gone now. But along with the CEO, he I think he lasted, what, another four months or something he wasn't after that. It wasn't very long anyway. So um, There was a period where we went through a, a couple of them, like really quickly in succession, <laughs> I remember. There was yeah. a few of them, yeah. yeah. I can't remember their names anymore. <laughs> well, they were rolling. They were exactly. memorable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember some of them? No. Nah. Nah. But that so that TV thing. Obviously, when the pay TV deal happened, that was very that polarizing was for, for fans. That was for that was another couple of years on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but but I mean, in terms of so once things started to go bad with the TV deals, that became sort of the saviour deal. Can you foresee a situation where if things had gone your way, where that might have happened, where it might still be a big player on the free-to-air market? Or is that just, was the pay, was having to go down the Fox Sports path inevitable at some point? Well, <clears throat> there's a few things you've got to get in place here. Firstly, um, what Fox Sports have done with the television of V8 supercars is outstanding. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah, the product, uh, coverage is, the product is brilliant, yeah. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry, I'm choking to Dying. death here. Don't tell um, me, I've got no insurance. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Now, now you tell me. I only came for the insurance money. <laughs> now you tell me there isn't any. Jeez, I've been stitched up. Look at Dave's up. shoes. Do you think I we mean, can afford insurance? I've been, I've been stitched up yet again. They look expensive shoes that are made to look <laughs> shitty. Right? Yeah, so yeah, they yeah. are expensive shoes made to look <laughs> shitty, I can tell. That would so, surprise me. Anyway, um, so... <laughs> what happened with um, the TV deal is with Fox is fantastic in terms of what they're putting to air, mm -hmm. the yeah, commentary, absolutely. the coverage, yeah. the whole bit. It's, it's really superb. Yeah. Really superb. Now, what should have taken place, in my humble opinion, not that there's very much humble about my opinion, <laughs> <coughs> is that um, – I'm definitely going to choke to death here um, – <laughs> is that um, there should have been a free-to-air mirroring – the Fox piece. So what I mean by that is, yes, do everything they're doing on Fox, but the actual races should have been on free-to-air TV mm -hmm. as well because motorsport relies on eyeballs. Mm. Yeah. Motorsport does, doesn't it? it? Relies on its viewership. Absolutely. And motorsport in particular because the last time I looked on the sides of all your chariots is a lot of sponsorships. Mm -hmm. Exactly. We're so moving billboards. That's you all are. we've got. <clears throat> you are. <coughs> I'm definitely choking to death. Yeah. <laughs> for those of you who can't see this, Michael's had his hands around my throat for the last five minutes. <laughs> um, but, um, you know, it, it, it really it really is got to, in the next TV rights deal, there's got to be a, a solid free-to-air component to it. And um, uh, long may the Fox thing continue, and it will. Mm. Uh, I'll yeah. tell you one reason why it will. Fox are doing terrific ratings. Yeah. I mean, overall, in their greater scheme of things, I think at the moment I'm a little bit out of touch, but I'm not so badly out of touch. So, but I reckon that 
the AFL is one, NRL is two, and I reckon V8 Supercars is three on Fox. Well, and they, you know, their ratings for, I think they did over half a million viewers during Bathurst this year. The thing I've heard is that they've gone up, or the only sport that they've had that's gone up 10% every year is Supercars since they've had it. Uh, and I, look, you could well be right. Yeah. I wouldn't uh, on for the, them on the figures I've seen. On the year. figures I've seen, I think that's absolutely spot on. So, um, and, and it's because I've done such a good job. Mm. So, if you're a purist, if you're a really keen fan, it's it's the place to watch. Yeah. Lots, you yeah, know, yeah. No so much question. coverage, so, so much coverage. Coverage. So almost much too much. Yeah, so almost too yeah. much. Way yeah. too much. We get home with. R- r- you from can the race too much, weekend. Can you? Well, like we get home from the race weekend. Tell us how hard work is. Shut up. I'm going to. Yeah. <laughs> After you get home from a race weekend, like you record all your races and all the in-between stuff, and there's too much, way too much. You sit there for like eight hours of the day, and you only get through like one day. Yeah, but you see, unfortunately, or fortunately in your case, because that's how you earn your money, um, <laughs> that's what a big percentage of the real rusted on fans want. Yeah, they want to see and, all the time. And they want to see as much, you know, there's not too much for yeah. them. Well, that's why so, we started this, is to give them a bit extra. Well, there you go, you see. So you're living proof. Yeah. But the the reality is that, uh, you know, they're doing a great job with that. But the free-to-air component missing is one of the reasons why the sport is struggling financially. And it is struggling. I mean, you know, let's, yeah. Yeah. For, for every genius who wants to put shit on me and say, oh, you know, um, he was a dickhead or, you know, what have you, the reality is nobody has got it back to within a... Well, a third of where I had it financially. Yeah. And that's probably been kind. It's probably more like 40 or 45%. But what do you think and, we're valued at miss, the moment then? Well, hang on. And you missed the compounding interest effect of going up year on year. So since obviously Tony's left, they've taken a big cut. and You're always going to miss that, that massive gain year on year. Aren't yeah, you? well, I mean, you know, and there's, it's still a fantastic sport. And I, mm. I you know, I only want to see it Do prosper. you still watch it? Yeah, of course I do. Yeah, yeah awesome. Of course I, do. Yeah, I, right. I actually thought the last three hours of this year's Bathurst was as good a compelling sports viewing television as you'll ever get. Yeah, the whole that Fabian had everything. Whole, even, had before, everything. even before the Fabian thing, Bathurst this year was a bloody good race. Was it? It was a good motor race. Yeah. It was fast. It, actually it was fast cars with fast drivers in them racing. That lead group all day, which you guys were in for a while. Um, it spiked when um, when Chaz crashed, crashed in the yeah. side of camp. Yeah. It actually spiked, like, I mean, two teammates taking each other out. Of, well, that was just dopey. Like, I mean, yeah, that's yeah. Just, Which we predicted. You know, I mean... Which, yeah, we predicted that. I, I, I really genuinely feel sorry for Timmy Edwards. I mean, you know, how can you sit there and watch that piece of shit unfold? <laughs> yeah. I mean... Well, he's got, he got used to it a fair bit because it's happened so <laughs> yeah. much to him. Three years in a three, row. Three years in a row. Three races in a row, I think, yeah. No, no. Well, it was two, uh, races, two races in a row, in a row three Bathursts in a row that yeah. those cars had ended Crashed up the same playing cars into each, other. into each other. It was interesting <laughs> being in the garage, let me tell you. <laughs> well, that, that, no, that's where you should have made a movie because that would have been a compelling movie. That would have made a Fellini movie look boring. <laughs> now, you mentioned earlier that the, uh, the sport's probably not as healthy as when you were there. What do you think we're lacking at the moment? Oh, well, I th- what we just I talked- mean, without, you know, sending us an invoice... No, 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 no. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm long gone. I'm checked out. But um, the, the reality is that it gets back to the point that I was just making a moment ago. You've got to have a compelling free-to-air package. You've got to have a compelling, you know. And, um, so the channel thing, you think now is just not cutting it? Well, you, the you channel just, tends. You, 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 need, you need eyeballs. Um, yeah. you know, you're more, no different to any other area. sport. If you want to have a look at our sports completely disappearing our, up its own orifice at the moment, look no further than the rugby union. I mean, union, yeah, I r- union in Australia is Dead. just all but down and out. And now they're talking about they might do something on Optus. Well, that'll be exciting. Optus? Yeah. You have a channel? Yeah. Well, they, they don't yeah. have a channel. They have an app. So oh. you can you can watch, you know, you can watch English Premier They've League. They've got the Premier League, which is, mm. yeah, that's, if that's you've what got an deal. deal. Yeah. Is it? yeah. Big money. Yeah. If you've got an Optus, uh, you know, Phone, mobile, you can watch oh, English don't. Premier League, which must be <laughs> singularly exciting. Um, but um, the reality is you've got to have free-to-air, good quality free-to-air. So the eights are going to have to find. And, I, you know, and speaking to Scafie and Sean Seymour and a few of these guys, they clearly have a focus to try and to get, um, get, that, get that done, get it happening. Um, and, you know, the other thing that will upset half the pit lane or the team owners is... Um, 
you know, you need a dictator running it because unfortunately. You do. You really yeah. do. Good motorsport. Look, you know, love me or hate me, I was a prick who could be a you dictator. Got and shit done, Tony. Got shit done. Mm, absolutely. And if you actually, it, it's an interesting analogy and I, 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 you know, I am a good friend of Bernie Eccleston's, but Bernie pointed it out to me some time back when he said, if you actually analyse all the successful motorsport in the... <coughs> <laughs> I'm dying. You really are dying. <laughs> <laughs> you just take your time there, mate. We'll, we'll yes. get you good. All the um, motorsport, I'm starting to talk like you now. <laughs> <laughs> you have a big night last night, Tony. I didn't. And that's the really that's the annoying thing. <laughs> <laughs> All the really good motorsport in the world's had a dictator running it. <clears throat> so... Well, even, the really good, even the really good countries have a big dictator, mm. don't they? Uh, well, sometimes. Uh, Bernie, <laughs> Bernie, Bernie Eccleston in Formula One, the France family in um, uh, what they did with NASCAR. And, and, you know, back in the heyday of Indy, um, they had the guy, Andrew, um, I've forgotten Andrew's surname. Not the but, people that had, um, is it George family? No, no, uh, no, no, no. We, the Indianapolis. He, he sort of yeah. screwed up. That was Indianapolis. Yeah, yeah. But, but the reality is that... <laughs> And one of the reasons why the pit lane needs that is because team motors left to their own devices. It's it's hard to control them because they've all got differing opinions and there's so many of them. You need someone to sort of collate it all and make one decision. This is happening. So saying, saying we're not doing that at the moment then? Well, I think it's an arms race. So, you know, <laughs> well, whoever it is. So, you know, if you like, <clears throat> go back a few years, Roland had the stick. So he was running the arms race. So everything was good. So, for you know, him. his world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. him was good. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, you know, now um, it's probably true to say that the Penske organisation is running the arms race, so yep. everything's good in their world. They've, they've got a lot of power, yes. You know, and that's not really what you need. What you really want to have in a perfect world is that most cars can get on the podium most weekends. Mm -hmm. Now, you're never going to achieve You're never going achieve 100%. Yeah, it's impossible. Because there's a bunch of, you know, flogs at the back of the grid who are never going to get there. Yep. But you've got to have about two-thirds of the mob Within, uh, who've yeah. got a chance. Yep. I 100% agree. And, you know, to do that, you've got to save them from themselves. Yeah. <laughs> right? And I understand some of them hate me for this kind of mentality and this kind of, you know, being so outspoken and they take it as I'm sort of putting them down, which I'm not. What I am saying, though, is that you've you've got to have um, somebody who says no. I mean, I'm well on the record of telling this story, but I well recall we had a really strong... We used to have a very strong board who spoke up a lot and had independence on that board. It was really quite good. And I'll never forget that, you know, we had a big debate, which Roland, I think, brought to the table. I'm Certainly he was an instigator with it. I'm not sure he brought it to the table, but they had a big debate about they wanted to really start to copy the braking systems that were being used in the DTM for our cars. The carbon fibre brakes? Yeah, I don't... I, look, I'm not a technical guy, so, yeah. you know, they, they, I allowed the debate. I was chair. I allowed the debate to go on. I remember Scafe was there. There was... Uh, Brad Jones was a bunch of other guys and then, of course, all the independents. The independents didn't join into the debate very much, but this huge debate went on and I shut it down after about, I don't know, an hour. And my, my, <laughs> oh, and, and my comment was really simple and, and it sort of speaks to what I'm trying to say here now and that is that, guys, actually... No one gives what they write. Nobody in those grandstands cares two shits. Yeah, 100%. Uh, there yeah. might be one or two guys. I mean, there might be two, a couple of purists sitting yeah, out there really that technical. are getting off on the fact that you've got the latest, greatest widget stopping the car. Mm. But the actual, most of those fans, if you take the main straight in Adelaide, most of those fans would actually like to see when your car gets to the end of that straight, you have to open the door and put your foot out <laughs> to try and slow it yeah. down <laughs> yes. and get the door shut in time yep. to get around the corner. That's actually what the fact, because they want to see the cars bumping and hitting each other and yep. attitude and being all over the shop. That's what they want. Yep, 100%. They yeah, couldn't yeah. give, and so that, you know, do a braking system for $4.95 and get it from Coles was sort of my simplistic attitude. <laughs> mm. But seriously, it's spending a lot of money on something the fans can't mm. eat, they, see they or... They don't grasp. They don't understand. Yeah, so it's, what's it's, the point? It's, it's yeah, it doesn't add to the point. show. It, it adds to the entertainment. And, I think, and, and that's probably saying that I found stepping back 
from being in that little hub where everyone is all the time. When you're when you're stuck in there, all you're thinking about is how can you how can you win? What what can we do to make sure we're winning next weekend? You're not really you're not thinking about the big picture, and that's why people such as yourself and the independents and all those people that have an opportunity to watch over and not have an invested interest as such in how you know how your business performs on a week to week basis. You need that entertainment side. And it probably even but goes as, to as the a, fact, you as know, as a driver, you don't really think about how the well, sport not, is being you're promoted. Not meant to. Or you, you're not meant to, but you, you know, your your job is to try and drive the chariot and beat the guy in the red chariot alongside you, or the yeah. guy behind you in the purple chariot. So, I, you know, I, I had a really great executive team. You know, um, some of them are still there. Shaney Howard's still there. Yes. And, Fox, and, um, the Silver the, Fox, the Silver Fox. <laughs> He's awesome. Well, he is. You know, because Shane must be getting 112 now. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I hope legend. he doesn't f- listen to this fucking program. I'm in the shit now. Uh, <laughs> Still too busy. Anyway, <laughs> but um, no, I really do have a really good executive team. And, and you know, uh, Penny Glasson was a head of marketing. And, you know, there was a really good group of people. And one thing that we used to talk about every Monday when we do, you know, sort of the big let's have a look at the weekend. I used to drive them nuts because I'd say, guys, we're in the entertainment business. Mm. So let's view everything through an entertainment lens. Mm. And then we'll get into the subset of motorsport and what does that mean and how do we do that better and all the rest of it. But fundamentally, you know, we used to drive, you know, the crowds were just insane. I and mean, we used to do Adelaide's Eclipse of 500s. I remember, you know, 300,000 people for mm. for three days. I and mean, they are huge. big numbers. Mm, yeah, yeah. And numbers. you couldn't move, you know. You, yeah. It was nuts. And... Uh, the way we built Bathurst up and, and did all of that after all of that fight, you know. So, but you've got you've got to make yourself entertaining. You've got to have eyeballs. People have got to come along, and people want you know. If you're doing it really well, you know, because I tell you why they bring their kids, they bring families, mm. and that, and that's where. Except Indy, Indy wasn't a family event, but now it is. Yeah, well, now it is, but, <laughs> but um, I really miss the old Indy. Yeah. <laughs> <I> really do. <laughs> we won't go there, um, but. You know, uh, the reality is that you have to you have to make sure that you've got a sport that appeals to families because if you don't have families, you you really struggle. The next generation won't come through. Correct. So with that in mind, what's your thoughts on moving the Gold Coast to a night race? Obviously, Gold Coast, you know, dear to your heart in terms of where you live and your involvement with that event, the night race thing, good idea. Well, I, I wrote actually. <laughs> I sort of got. I wrote a. I used to, um, and I'm going to do it again. I, I was enjoying it there for a while, but I got too busy. I, I used to write a weekly column for the Gold Coast Bully, mm-hmm. and I wrote yeah. to coincide with last year's race on the Gold Coast. Yeah. I wrote a two-page smack in the face to the whole event, which went down really well with some people. Yeah, if you believe that, I've got some <laughs> land uh, to sell you on Stradbroke Island, hardly ever floods. <laughs> um, and anyway, so. So uh, my point that I was trying to do, and the smarter ones got it, the smarter ones went, okay, okay, what he's doing is trying to make us raise the bar. And I was, because you can't, you know, everything they were doing at the Gold Coast event. It's been done. I, I, well, I did it. Mm. Yeah. And so that's got to be at least 12 years ago. You can't keep doing the same, 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 roll it out every year yeah. and expect the same, same return. Yeah. It, it just gets boring. Mm-hmm. So... I'm really pleased they're having a crack at something new. Yeah. Uh, will a night race work on the streets of the Gold Coast? Why not? Possibly. Yeah. It's certainly worth having a crack at. Yeah. And the government is stumping up with the money, so who gives a shit? Yeah. I mean, you know. If mm, it's going to work anywhere, it's probably going to work If there. it's going to yeah. work anywhere, that's as good as anywhere exactly to give it a right. shot. Yep. And, you know, well, um, IDM are the engineers. They were my old yep. engineers from way back. They're smart dudes, you know. Um, charge too much, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> they they will, you know, make it work from a technical point of view. I, look, I think it's... You know, I think it's not a bad idea, and it, 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 I hopefully it reinvents the event and gives it another life and kicks it on for another, I don't know, five or eight years or something. I mean, at, at least there's one thing we know about Gold Coast: it rains every evening, doesn't it? Oh my uh, god! Well, well, don't 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 this don't year, but don't yeah, I, I think I think that's a real I think that's a real chance. But luckily, it's a nice wide open track, so rain. Yeah, yeah that's <laughs> right. Dave loves the rain. That's uh, it's funny you it's mentioned that. On, um, where do you qualify, Bathurst in the rain? <laughs> number one <laughs> number one <laughs> it's it's funny you mentioned that letter because there was a, actually a theory when that came out that you were trying to destabilise the sport so you could go and buy it back or you could you know 
There yeah. was a uh, that that was actually a genuine it's, theory that was doing last year on the Gold Coast. Would you come back? You know, you know, come back? You know what theories are like, don't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. like that moon landing one. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's, that's a good one. You know, you know. flat earthers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, flat earth theory. Kick Would you so. come back? Come back to what, buddy? Supercars? No. No. No way. No, well, because firstly, I've moved on. I'm doing other shit in my life. I've done a... Um, Not one of your, one or two new projects? Yeah, no, but, you know, I've kind of been there and done it. Yeah. Um, yep. And, you know, there's a whole group of new people there doing it now. Um, I actually made an executive decision in my... Well, partly in my head, but also because I was really involved in projects overseas. I did a big project with the uh, Rolling Stones and then I did a huge project with Real Madrid um, and then the Nelson Mandela Foundation. So all of those projects were all overseas. So I was out of the country a lot for five years, my wife and I, who's my partner in all of this crime. And um, so I made an executive decision not to pass any public commentary for the five years I got out. That's well in past now. So now I'm happy to and um, make some comment from the sidelines and I actually don't give a shit whether people listen to it or not. I mean, that doesn't really phase me whether they do or they don't. I think, but I, I think people appreciate it though. They appreciate what you think. Well, I think a lot of people respect what you Absolutely, did so they yeah. probably appreciate that. Well, you know, maybe. I hope, I hope that's and, nice. Or that I, I nice. think I do. Well, I, I mean, yeah, well, I was there while I was running. in there, there's no doubt everybody that, uh, a lot of people that I speak to believe that you made the sport what it is today and that's, you know, why Dave probably gets paid 10 million bucks for 10 years or whatever he's getting. Is he only on 10? Yeah. Jeez, Dave, I, no good. You need a better manager, mate. <laughs> <laughs> you're worth, well, right. you know, you're worth a lot more than 10. Oh, thanks, Tony. But you see, you're only worth more than 10 if you keep making your odd, funny, quirky comments and not getting fined 25 grand for them. I don't well, mind paying. That's, that's a small price to pay, isn't it? It's new well, if you're earning ten million exactly. twenty five thousand it's not even it's not even a round can, <laughs> can you claim it on tax? Of course you can. Well, well, I claim part, it on, part of the expense it's of part of doing running business the, and I got the a David Reynolds show. And, and I got a bunch of Qantas points for it because I paid it on my um credit card. <laughs> Flew around go. the world. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I almost got an upgraded business out of it. Jeez. I can't even remember what you said now. What did you say? Um Pussy Wagon. I called that, you know, the all female car. Oh, that, that's right. Well, that's clever. No, that's a clever <laughs> comment. But, but, but in any that's case, why I love you. In, in any case, what I my understanding was that's how the car was referred to the whole year. Well, yeah, we, that that car came from our team. Yeah, correct. So that's what they they actually call it the internally they were calling it another name. The, yeah, we don't. Want I to hear don't. The other yeah, name. we we should definitely not say so that. So then, then I sort of rebranded it into a nicer word. Yeah. And then I got hammered for it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's a song. Is that? Yeah. A song. It, um, oh, no, it's um, out of Greece. Beyonce or saying? Or? Oh, right. Well, there's, and then there was the um, the car out of Kill Bill. There you go. I, I mean, one of the problems with, I think, where the world's going wrong at the moment, so now we'll have a world discussion. Yeah. yeah. This yeah. Is yeah. Sanitizing. Let's, yeah. let's now, get one back of the, page. One of the problems <laughs> where the world's going wrong at the moment is we're all starting to take ourselves too seriously. I, I mean, know. you know, it's... If, Fed. The Australian used to have a great larrikin spirit yeah, that's to what, it. That's what I and you know, you look at a it's guy missing. like Gary Rogers. One of the reasons why the sport's going to miss Gary Rogers yeah. is nothing to do with yes. Did he bring up young drivers? Brilliant at it. Did he, you know, create a great team environment? Yes. Did he do lots of interesting shit? Yes. Yeah. One of the things that Gary did was he brought the larrikin element to the sport. Yeah. I mean, mm. some of his antics on the grid. Well, on the, the weekend, life oh, he's like, at, at the Newcastle. last round, he yeah, was yeah. standing there, uh, you know, drag dressed full in drag. Complete Complete drag, and that's that's brilliant. Yeah, I mean, like, it's amazing. But we all get so serious now. We all have to be all, you know. Everybody has to be completely respectful of every single person's point of view and mm. thought. Look, I mean, I, I don't care. Now, I, I mean, really don't care I'm, about I'm, that. I'm, I'm luckily I'm at a stage of life where I don't give a shit. Yeah, um, no. <laughs> but it, but really, you know, it, some of it's getting carried away. Do I think you have to respect? people yes respect their views yes respect their religions yes do i think you can be a bit of a larrikin and have a joke and have a laugh at yourself or a laugh at other people yes of course you can and i hope one day that the cycle you know because these things tend to be a pendulum and we swing way over here at the moment yes. i hope it comes back more to middle ground and people can join in again to the australian larrikin spirit 
piece because it's you know it is missing. It is definitely it is. missing, and it's, it's part of the fun. You know, yeah, in a press conference, yeah, they're the best fun because you can say whatever you want. But we, sport, we sport really so misses it as well when you don't have that because you want drivers being outspoken and saying things about everyone else, and mm. you know, everyone's so definitely. worried about getting slammed on social media, what their sponsors might think. Like it's disappearing. Yeah, the, the sponsors will love it if you got something different to say. But drivers don't seem to. I don't know if it's the advice they're getting. Drivers don't seem to think that way. No, they well, I think they're well, everybody's. Think so. the whole thing has been they're all to be fair to V8 supercar or supercar whatever it's called this month we call we can uh, call it V8s can you because okay, everyone still refers to it as V8s well because mm. if, if you haven't noticed by the way <laughs> you've still all got V8s yes oh, we have noticed yeah. Yeah. no the, we're, um, we're going to go turbo at one stage weren't we yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that would have been huge yeah imagine um, the parody discussions we would have been having around oh, that uh, oh man um that's a good example of lunatics running the asylum right there. <laughs> so so what what happens, though, is that everybody gets sanitised now and gets brought back to a level playing field. We're trying to make – I mean, I'll give you a great example. So if you've got kids, kids are at school, right? Running race. Everybody gets a ribbon now. Yeah, so no one misses out. Yeah. But that's not life. That's, no, I mean, that's, that's not life. You that's know, not if survival you, of the if fittest. You, yeah, if you screw up driving, you know, Betty doesn't say, oh, it doesn't matter. You know, why don't I pay you like you came first? Because yeah. you're in the <laughs> race. Be awesome. Yeah. You're in the race. Yeah, you ran it. That's not how yeah. life is. No, you go for a job, you, you don't get the job. The guy doesn't come out and say, sorry, sorry, look, the 10 candidates who missed out, you didn't get the job, but here, here's, here's all 100 salary. grand yeah, each yeah, yeah. for the next 12 months because well, I yeah. want to make you all good. They're, yeah. they're, they're breeding yeah. a bunch of mediocre people, aren't they? Correct. That don't Mediocracy. Drive. Mediocracy exactly. reigns supreme. <laughs> and, and you can't have that in a team. Nope. Could you imagine, you know, oh, look, I want all my engineers to be, you know, the lowest con- common denominator. I don't want anybody to be really smart in the team. I mean, what sort of team work. would you yeah. have? No, team. that's right. <laughs> a shit team, correct. <laughs> 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 now, you spoke about it a bit earlier, the stuff that you did overseas. And uh, for AVL and I, we're big football fans, the mm. world, the world game. Oh, well, the world game outside Australia. I mean, it means shit in Australia, but outside of Australia. <laughs> oh, the poor A-League. Yeah, in fact, in fact, in in the fact mm. we could be a crowd at the A-League in Australia. Oh, come on, mate. We're big Socceroo fans over here. Yeah, okay. They, they've done well too, yep. Well, they could, they'll probably qualify for the World Cup. Well, there's yeah. a million teams in the World Cup now from, from next World Cup onwards. So it'll be, yeah, that's it'll right. be hard to not qualify. But the stuff that you did with Real Madrid, that must have been pretty interesting because they, obviously, they're a worldwide brand. I mean, they... um, 66 million followers on social media. That's unbelievable. Yeah, no, they're they're off the Richter scale. Um, They are probably... They're probably the biggest sporting... trying to think. They'd be the biggest sporting club in the world, I would think. They'd certainly be in the top three. So, you know, what's... What what could be bigger? NFL. I, I was think just trying the, to think. Uh, no, there's no, no NFL. Way. Oh, maybe, maybe, maybe the Dallas Cowboys. Cowboys yeah. Maybe, maybe. I mean, Real Madrid, the last time I looked, were worth, valued at about $4 billion as a club. Um, but they're, they're an extraordinary organisation to work with and um, to see up close and firsthand. And, um, you know, the money in European soccer is off the Richter scale. I mean, they don't have an eyeball problem. <laughs> They've no. got a serious uh, eyeball connect. Yeah. Okay. And what did you look, what did you learn? Or what the differences that you saw how they run business? I mean, obviously, you know, you're still in the sporting industry now. How they do things and how how we do it over here. Oh, look. Actually, I know this is kind of disappointing, but to be honest, the best of Australian sport holds its own anywhere in the world. You know, the AFL. Um, love them or hate them. The AFL is a truly world-class, well-run sport. Mm-hmm. It ticks every box. It's uh, There's a reason why it's the number one sport in this country. It's got the best people at the top. It's um, very well run. It's, um, it's very professional. Very professional. All the teams very well set Very up. professional. And well, you know, you it's, it's a tough, it's a very, very... Talk about, you know, having two-thirds of the grid that can win. I mean, the AFL system, if you've got half a chance, every seven to nine years, you're in the go zone and the way the kind of draft and everything works. Oh, is that how they work it out? Sort of how it roughly works out. So that, you know, that everybody, you know, comes around, gets a chance. Mm. Now, because it's sport and there's no perfect level playing field, of course, what happens if you get, you know, aberrations of that? So you've got Richmond very dominant now, probably should have won three, probably should have won three back-to-back, to to be truthful. Um, uh, They didn't, but that's sport. Um, you know, 
they they turned up and played a bad game last year on an important day and Collingwood played well and Collingwood made it to that grand final. I mean, Collingwood looked like they were going to win the game and at the last moment, West Coast won the game. That's why it's sport. That's why it's compelling. That's why it gets the TV ratings that's and that's watch. why it gets the dollars. Yeah. Yeah. It gets your adrenaline going when you watch it. And that that's, you know, going back to the sport that you guys are focused on, that's why V8 supercars, contrary to, you know, I know there's some other categories, again, doing the usual... We're going to take over the world and we're going to be fabulous and everybody's going to come and watch us run around in TCR cars. <laughs> but the reality is whilst V8 supercars are running around at Mount Panorama, it's all that's going to be the dominant yeah, motorsport absolutely. category mm. in the country. I actually yep. heard a story about you. Um, about, about him? No, about you. About me. Some, someone came to you about Nations Cup telling you it was going to be one of the greatest shows on the planet. I went and through this you, twice, uh, actually, in... So, and then you had something about a third eye or something. Yeah, no, that's a good story. That one. Um, <laughs> I, I actually it. went through you this twice. So the you. first time I went through it was uh, against Super Tourers, um, two litre um, shit boxes, yeah. and <laughs> um, and it was going to be bigger than Ben Hur, and they were going to they they threw us out about the old traditional Bathurst, which is absolutely true. They did, and then I ran our own Bathurst three weeks later and cleaned them up, um, and eventually that race packed up, and we've move back into the original slot. And then, bugger me, I thought, you know, that's it now. And then, what, nine or ten years later, along comes good old Ross Palmer uh, and starts Nations Cup. And he, he did the same thing. So he bought three or four categories. I can't remember all these categories now, to be honest with the you. The same thing as what TCR. Yeah, been. similar. You know, so we'll own four or five categories and we'll take over the world and, you know, watch this and be unbelievable. Um, and Ross Palmer, I did, it was very, very funny. So... He, I actually, it was, I remember we were out at um, uh, the track at Sydney that's now Oran Park. And I was in my trailer and he had his trailer. And it was, you know, it was at that stage where, you know, whoever had the bigger trailer was the biggest swinging dick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it still goes on these days, don't worry. Uh, happens. Which is quite funny. But, you know, I, I obviously got off on all that shit too, so I enjoyed that. And um, Anyway, he, he actually did have an operation on his hip or something or his knee. I can't remember what it was. So he sent a request. He was meant to have a meeting in my trailer. And he sent a request, could I come and meet him in his trailer? So I... Trailer park boys. Yeah. I looked at Wayne Caddick and Wayne Caddick said, you know, do we care? And I said, no, no, come on, let's go. So we went over and we sat down and Ross was giving, proceeded to give me a lecture at how the fans really had turned up because they wanted to see Nations Cup. Right, the the yes, it was it. I, the way I needed to look at it, it was a circus, and yes, uh, the V8s were there, and we were the I can't re remember now what he referred to us as, but I think he said we were the trapeze act. Um, but he would turned up the Nations Cup. He was the Lions and Tigers act, right? And so the fans were just <laughs> as interested in watching the trapeze as they were watching the Lions and Tigers, right? And. So I listened to this great explanation. I thought, you know, you, oh, really? That's, that's just a load of shit. Anyway, so he went on a bit further and he said, and he said, what you don't appreciate is I've got a third eye. <laughs> and Wayne Caddick's looking at me. I'm looking at Wayne thinking, you know, what's he on about? <laughs> anyway, so um, he says, yeah, I've got a third eye. And out of my third eye, I get to see things in the distance and things in the future that you don't get to see. And out of that third eye, I see a day coming when Nations Cup will be the biggest and best motorsport, certainly in Australia and probably in this region of the world. And so I said, oh, that's interesting, Ross. I said, actually, Ross, I've also got a third eye, I should tell you, but unlike you, I have to take my pants off and bend over for my third <laughs> eye. <laughs> 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 and poor old Wayne, I thought Wayne was going to have a heart attack on the spot. He just racked up laughing. And, 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 and Ross didn't see the funny side of it at all. <laughs> Ross sat there looking at me like I was a fucking idiot or something. Anyway, so um, it was, oh, it was, so it was, it, it was, it was one of those really funny, I've got a million of those sort of stupid stories. But yeah, that's, so that's the, that's the third eye story. And it's a true story, unfortunately. But of course, um, time went on and uh, Nations Cup and all of that. Came and go. All went out the door eventually and faded away to black. And guess what was left behind? V8 supercar. Well, where do you see... I mean, now, obviously, you referred to it earlier with TCR sort of doing a similar game plan. 
we we probably don't need it in motorsport. We just spoke before how you know how fragile it is. You at definitely the don't need we it. So, we <laughs> we actually need them to be together. Really, I mean, not just for the sports interest, but even for the fans. I mean, how it would be much better. Well, I think one. Un- of, I, I think a, one of the problems is un- it's completely unique to motorsport. And it's completely unique to Australia, as far as I can tell. It happens a little bit elsewhere, but not to the degree it does here, where. New categories come along, and the first thing they decide is they're going to declare that they're going to blow the other mob out of the water in a period of time. <laughs> and I don't quite get that because um, it doesn't work that way. Um, because the eyeballs are clearly, even still today, are massively strongly focused on V8 supercar. And if you don't believe me, uh, have a look at the crowd shot on TV at the end of the race on. Sunday. Hmm. Have a look at the crowd shots at Bathurst this year. Have a look at the TV ratings from Bathurst this year, whether you want to look at the Fox ratings or whether you want to look at the Network 10 ratings. It was their biggest ever. Yeah. So um, the, the reality is that whatever it is with the Australian psyche, right, and there's a squillion reasons what it is, but whatever it is, Australians love V8 supercar or the derivative of it. Hmm. Um, and to knock that off its purge, uh, the, you, you're in for a hell of a job. You're in for a hell of a job. And and I'm sorry, but a two-litre car is not going to do it. The sound, the attitude, all of that's completely wrong in the Australian psyche. Um, and by the way, it hasn't worked that fabulously anywhere else either. You know, I'm sorry. It's not like we can say, yeah, but hang on, Tony, look at the T- TCR races in Europe. They're drawing 150,000 people. Yeah. Yep. Right? So, so. That's my first commentary, and it's unfortunate that you know. I would imagine the pair of them are now going to go through some sort of, um, you know, charge off against each other for the next couple of years because Australian motorsport needs all its focus on the big end of town, and then a number of support categories effectively running underneath the big end of town, yeah. and all getting a little bit of success. Mm-hmm. While you've got A trying to knock off B you are going to damage You're both A and, and B. B. Yeah. Yeah. You are not going to have a situation where neither gets uh, a chip of pain off of it. And I think that's unfortunate. And the other thing, the, the other aspect that comes up in all of that, having lived through it for 20 years nearly um, in motorsport, was all this crap around manufacturers. Manufacturers talk is the greatest load of baloney in the history of motorsport. I tend to agree. I love it. I, yeah. always, I agree too. Um, I mean, um, I, I, once again, I'm on the record of this, so it's no, no. By the way, no one's jumped up and said, "Oh, he's absolutely wrong." That was not true. In the height of V8 supercar, when we were booming, you know, when everything was, you know, and as a sport, I think we used to try and assess all the forms of income, you know, whether it be from teams, whether it be from events, whether it be from merchandise, whether it be from TV rights, whether it be whatever it was. Yep. We used to try and weigh all that up, and I think at the height we got to about sort of around circa 270 to $290 million a year in, in this country. It's a good number. It's huge. Um, it is huge. And um, at that peak, my best guess is that Ford and Holden, our two manufacturers back then, there was nobody else, uh, were tipping in circa $20 million a year. Mm-hmm. Now, that's not $20 million each. That's yeah, $20 totals, million. Dollars yeah, not even 10%. Wasn't even 10%. Now that was at the that was at the crest of the wave in terms of manufacturer support, yeah. whether that be money for teams, whether that be providing chassis, whether it be paying some drivers a bit of money, whatever it may be, that whole sort of echo sphere was circa twenty million. Maybe it was twenty two point seven, but you know, it was Relevant, that sort yeah. of number. So that's that was at the height of all of that. Today it's only a fraction of that. Yeah. Right? It's only a fraction. Having said that, I think it's great. <laughs> It'd be 10% of that. It'd be 10% of that. But having said that, I think it's great that Ford are back in. I think, you know, the Ford Holden rivalry, the Ford GM rivalry has been a really good part of Australian motorsport. And long may it continue. Um, but the reality is no team, perhaps the exception of Roland, no team today, if you had a, held a gun to their head and said, show us how much money you're getting from a manufacturer, no team could even show you a decent-sized check. 
Hmm. Uh, Roland could be the slight exception because I suspect he still gets a decent check out of Holden, but I don't know that. So I'll, I'll none, give. I'll none, make none of the other teams get anything. Correct. I'll make him cars, the exception maybe. to the rule. Mm. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm trying to be really fair yeah, here, yeah. so I'm making him sort of the exception to the rule. Now, now we come along and we hear all this garbage about oh, the manufacturer support of TTR is going to be huge. I'll tell you what it'll be. It'll be here's a car or here's two cars. Right. Or oh, here's two cars road and we cars. And road cars. Yeah. And we might take a twenty thousand or thirty thousand dollar box at their marquee event, whatever yeah. that might be. That's gonna be the extent of the matter. Fact, the matter of fact, you know, Peugeot. I'll just pick it. I'm not picking on Peugeot here, right? For those Peugeot <laughs> fans listening, I have nothing against Peugeot. <laughs> They're beautiful cars. Um, but take Peugeot as an example. Peugeot aren't stumping up to the TCR Australian game. Hey, here's four cars. Go trash them, build, rebuild them, do whatever you want. Here's a check for a million dollars towards the team. And by the way, here's two fifty thousand. I want Davy Reynolds driving in one car, and here's two fifty thousand. I want that Italian stallion driving in the other car. <laughs> Deep Fury. <laughs> Deep Fury. That's what I was talking about. <laughs> um, so that's just you know. So it's all it's all hyperbole, but it's yeah. bullshit when you really it distill is, it down. Yeah, when you absolutely more. distill it down, it's all crap. If they turned off manufacturer support, would still run. Would still have. That, and, and that's how that's how well, the sport did. should be. Yeah, Ford have been in and yeah. out since the beginning, haven't oh, they? God, yeah. Ford have been in, and you know, I'm probably at the peak. Um, Pilates, I can't remember. Was it Jeff? I think Jeff. Yeah. I think mm. it was Jeff. Pilates, when he was the chief of Ford Australia, was the only time in all my time where Ford were really 100% in and really concerned and consumed with what was happening in V8 supercar. What was that? Was that the BA? Was that around then? Or uh, no, I it was. It was, cer- it was certainly when Ross, St- Ross and Jimmy Stone were at the height of their power. So what were they? Oh, what was, chariot no, were they? BA, BA, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, that's yeah. when I noticed as a kid, Ford sold the most amount of cars. They had. Yeah, well, on the road, they, they had the best street presence. They had everything. And, and I, I was just a kid watching that. See, and here's another theory. Long gone are the days where race on Sunday, sell on Monday. Yeah, yeah. Right? Uh, yeah. That, that got a m- yeah. million miles ago, you know, uh, back. I think, I think, think Jesus that... Christ was driving a Ford in those days, <laughs> yeah. right? So it's a while ago. So the, the, reality, the reality is, um, though, today is a lot of people that go to motorsport who follow, like a lot of people who are at Newcastle on the weekend, they don't necessarily drive a Ford or a Holden. No. But they've picked them as their team. Or they've yeah. picked a driver. Or they've picked, you know, Betty because yes. they love Betty. Yep. They, you know, something about the Betty floats yeah, their yeah, boat, yeah, yeah. right? Or they love Gary because they like the shit he did. Or whatever it may be. So you don't... You, you can get really caught up on on this, oh, well, that's, you know, they have no interest if we don't race something that people can go and buy. That's just, that's because that's not how people think. No, it's, well, it comes back to what you said. It's an entertainment-based sport, isn't it? It's not a technical no, or a exactly manufacturer-based right. sport. Yeah, you know, my, my personal perv car, I've, you know, I've got one. So, you know, I, I can speak freely now because I've been a long time out of it uh, because people also used to ask me, are you Ford or a Holder man? I used to say I'm Switzerland. <laughs> um, but the truth is, I'm a huge Mustang lover. I love, oh, yeah, uh, yeah all right. the old Mustang. stuff. Yeah, 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 really the old stuff and and what have Not you. Not the but new one. No, I like. I've in fact, I've got. I've just recently, only about um, eight months ago, nine months ago, bought because um, I had an order for Age of the New Bullet. Oh, all right. Um, yeah. But so. You know, that, that's just me personally. Mm. Now, it's not my kind of number one car. It's not the car I mainly drive Monday to Friday or just any shit like that. I'm I sure just happen to like it. I'm sure. I'm sure a lot of our, our listeners or maybe the people that watch Making will be uh, they'll be now going. Wait, when was Tony involved? That's right, they were winning. <laughs> 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 oh, I, I used to have you know all the time, and people were convinced. And he's a great mate of mine still to this day. I love him like a brother. He's a terrific guy. But Scafi and I were well, always very close. But you know, people were convinced, oh, you know, that's why Scafie's winning because, you know, Coco's helping him. I used to get all these letters, fan mail letters really? and shit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and here's the truth. I probably don't think I ever got involved in a decision of a sporting nature. Maybe, maybe, you should be. You should maybe be once or twice I might have made an opinion in a general sense about the sporting aspect of it. But I used to leave that up to guys like Shane Howard and that who have got far more knowledge than I'll ever. I mean, I could study for the next 10 years and I'd never catch up to his knowledge. <laughs> and, but but there was lots of others. So, you know, why get involved in shit I you mean, don't know? Speaking of Scafie and his, you know, when he dominated in the sport, 
How, how did you see him? Was he the villain of winning or was, you know, because that's what I guess when we look at our sport, you've got Dave as the, you know, What's Dave? the larrikin or the superhero. What? The superhero. <laughs> <laughs> We're not talking you, about you, you and Tahan, mate. Do you mate. cry yourself tonight <laughs> thinking this shit? Or do you? Oh, you constantly, yeah. I've got my hand on my pants. <laughs> but, you know, I guess shit. we, the, the stars of the show being, you know, the personalities yep. and having that. Yeah. Where did you see, or what do you see we have now? Oh, well, one of the things that infuriates the crap out of me these days, that I would stamp out completely, is how you all get out of cars and give each other a cuddle and a tonguey and, you know, uh, all, you know, all, 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 all hug each other love and each carry other. on, have a love in. I mean, you're meant to be at war with each other for crying out loud. That's what I've been banging on about the whole year. But the, yeah. I mean, but it's here. We've had it. We've had it since Bathurst. There's niggle out there. The paddock was weird yeah, in that, Newcastle for the last But that's only just recent. Yeah, absolutely. With great respect. Very much so. But, I, but you, here's my – one of my thoughts. Yeah. I hope it really continues into next but year. Sure. They're because, trying to shut it down, though. But, well, that's dumb. Yeah. Because fans love it. I, I hate to tell you that. The eyeballs out there watching, they actually want to know it matters. They yeah. want to know yeah. it matters. They and when they passion. see that grief, mm -hmm. when they see him spinning the dummy, when they see blokes around, but Paul Morris used to be fantastic. And Paul was, you know, the best. Because yeah. yeah, yeah. Paul would say exactly what he thought to camera. He'd tell cams what he thought of them. He'd smash helmets against stuff. You know, he was the kind of, you know, the real dual dude. Yeah. And um, uh, so, but you need... You need, you know, you need we, need heroes. Yeah. we need heroes need, and villains, don't we? Need we? Big absolutely. We need yeah. them. You, you don't need everybody being the ace good guy. I mean, Scafie, you know, let me tell you, he could have plenty of shit on the liver when it, when something was up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he wasn't, you know, he wasn't Mr. Squeaky Clean, all around, crew cut, nice guy all the time. I mean, when when he got off on his rocket, he got off on his rocket. Yeah, he was no super question. competitive yep. and loved to oh, beat everyone and, oh. and hated everyone he raced against, just but so it, that was his way to... To deal with it. Larry, Absolutely. Larry, I can Larry's remember. Larry's the same. I remember Larry getting, I can't remember what year, it was very early in my term up at um, Bathurst and he had, he came close, but they had a bit of car failure right towards the end of the race. I went into the garage to genuinely say, oh, you know, bad luck, Larry. Um, sorry about that today. You know, you had a real chance there. And he said, basically, sex and travel and, you know, get the <laughs> fuck out of the garage. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, and I wasn't. You wouldn't you know, expect I, anything I was, less, would you? <laughs> no, but yeah. But that's, I love. That's but, what you love about him. But you know what? I came out of the gate and I actually walked away smiling, which I didn't want him to see because he would have thought I was being yeah, yeah, yeah. disrespectful yeah. to him. But but I was smiling because I thought I, I love it. I yeah. love I love that passion. Yeah. Mm. If the guys have got that kind of passion, we're really going to go somewhere as a sport. Yeah. And you know. We just had a bunch of team owners that would display that sort of passion, and now it's got all sort of bit. We're still, there's but still a couple. Is, of, um, I mean, they try. Dave, like, but Barry, Barry, Barry's he's the guy now who does yeah. that, and My it's team boss is the guy. He yeah, definitely. Lies but the up. thing, the thing is, we have we have, we talk about Ford and Holden coming back. You can be a hero and a villain as well. You know, like Depends was was Scafie, He was a hero to some people but and a villain the, to others, and that's great. That's yeah. how it. But that's you can be both be. on the same day, by the way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, so you that's can be, right. You know, it can be Mister Squeaky Clean, uh, clear cut, perfect dude. Yeah. One moment, and you know, half an hour later, you can be spitting chips and complaining yeah. and yep. bitching about the top ten shootout. It was unfair. You know, I thought this was crap and. Blah, 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 whatever, yeah. whatever. But now you don't get any of that. It's all sanitised. It's Absolutely. Like, like I still a, have a go. Like, yeah, but everyone, it's a lot more controlled, mate. Oh, it 100% I, I mean, yeah. you've got quite a suit to cost you 25K. A little bit, yeah. But, but this year, you, you've led it's everything awesome. this year, like in terms of, you know, when there was someone, and Barry does the same, when it was something to complain about parody, you were the guy that did it. Everyone I, will I do it at the back of the boy. garage on a, on a race weekend, but you're the one who will do it with a dictaphone. Under your mouth and actually boy. go yeah. on the thing, yeah. So, there, um, well, that's and that's there's something admirable about that. And if more people well, did you. that, we would have what well, we've had been from shut Bathurst. down this year. There's been multiple occasions where they've said, even please don't comment on this. Please don't talk yeah. about it anymore. They're basically, you know, whether it be the parody, parody issue or yeah. even at Newcastle, you know, with well, the whole social media yeah. thing. But I, I mean, what weren't you allowed to talk about at Newcastle? Well, that's well, what no, I'm still trying was, to actually there, understand. Still trying to work that one out. We don't really know. So it was about so like not. Uh, be more respectful on social media. I mean, would you ever do that? Tell your athletes, let's say at the Suns, what they can and can't say on social media? Oh, absolutely, in terms of respectfulness. Yeah. But that doesn't say, you know, that 
you, you can't no question it. Or so, so if you want to bring an yeah. AFL terminology into it, yeah. you know, that's not to say that, you know, you can't have your captain saying, you know, gee, it was really crap today that we lost to Team yeah. X and yeah. next time we're going to absolutely give them a building and, you know, we're really pissed off about yeah. that result and da-da-da-da-da-da-da. Yeah. So, you know, all I'm saying is, you know, you can still activate your sport yeah. without – you know, going too far. I'm not suggesting you jump onto social media and start, you know, um, bagging people. Oh, bagging yeah. people. Yeah. But, um, well, even that, even that, even that I don't mind bagging. to a degree. Yeah. Even that I don't mind, pro- provided it's respectful that's, bagging. That's the thing. And I, yeah, to clarify, I don't mean just go and say whatever. But no, to anyone it, out there, they can be as disrespectful as they want to me because I can cop it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I tell you, <laughs> you're I, welcoming I'm, it. I'm in professional sport. I'm, I'm, I'm up you're for the, the challenge. Spotlight. I don't care. I, I tell you, I tell a story against myself. So really, a, a, this letter has always stayed with me and I actually read it out. I remember one year at the um, gala, re- quite early in the piece, so third year or something like that, I guess it was. And so a fan had written to me, handwritten letter. So, you know, basically I'll paraphrase it. It started off, uh, d- dear Mr. Cochran, um, m- myself and my mates go to Bathurst every year and we do usually sand down and we thought when you first got involved in sport, you're a complete wanker <laughs> and we thought you're going to ruin everything and everything that we loved about the sport, you seemed to want to change and it was just going to be a mess, right? So that's sort of, that's the kind of the first paragraph which went on for ages. And then the f- um, second paragraph, he sort of goes, but, you know, actually it's all going pretty well we actually started to love it you know it's it's pretty cool and you know you know really like how you've improved things for the fans and blah 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 blah. anyway so i guess the and and he signs off his name i won't mention i can't remember his name now anyway but he signs off his name and then he puts p.s by the way i still think you're a wanker (laughs) (laughs) and then you know i kind of love that that's kind of like you know you if you're going to put yourself out there yeah, you and you're going to be a driver, yeah. sorry, or yeah. you're going to be a team owner, you're going to be the head mechanic or chief engineer or whatever, yeah. you, you've got to expect yeah. a bit, bit back. You've got to, you, you have to. If you don't want to serve it up, if you want to yeah. be Mr. Vanilla, yeah. then go and buy a four-square store at Dubbo and, you know, don't but get involved. I mean, we even get it on this show. People write in. I mean... And that's the thing. This this show is just us having a chat, and we're going to share our opinion. Yeah. There's no doubt about it. And just you can't like please everyone. No, you exactly. just can't. You just can't. I guess. I guess the difference, like you talk about that letter if you're with tra- social if you're media. Everybody, I'll tell you what will happen to this show. You'll be dead in four months. Oh, exactly. That's exactly right. But with social exactly media now, right. examples of that letter are coming through to these guys all the time. I guess that's the fresh. A reasonably fresh challenge now is yeah, that people so have you, so much direct So then contact. you have a choice, don't you, on social yeah. media? Yeah, you participate yeah. or you don't? Correct. Yeah. Shut yeah. it down. Yeah. If, if you're yeah. not happy, yeah. shut it down. Yeah. You know, it's like the thing that annoys me about I'd fix social media tomorrow. If I was emperor of the world, mm. uh, I, I'd clean it up in How? one day, 24 How? hours. Because you could not go on social media without publicising your actual name Correctly. Mm-hmm. So yes. so if you said, if David Reynolds posted to Tony Cochran, Tony, you know, I'm going to come around and blow your brains out, the social media police could go and actually look up, right, this is where you live and everything, yeah. and you could be warned that if you post again like that, you're banned from social media for five years. Yeah. Or, you know, if you go to the next stage, then they come around and, I guess, in your case, arrest you and put you in an asylum. Um, but... That would shut it down. Yeah. The reason why so many people get away with so much shit on social media is they hide behind false you know, names, yeah. acronyms, or yeah. Yeah. false Pseudos. names, or yeah. we, pseudo names. And we or, see it on here as well. You know, people phantoms, yeah. phantoms right in all the time. And that, yeah. and, you know, the phone call that I you mean, cop. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, had some dude ring me. I got to tell. I got to show you after. It's hilarious. It's like we played on one of our early episodes. The whole thing. It was spraying me, calling me an absolute wanker. But I loved it. I actually kind of really enjoyed it. He was passionate. <laughs> he was super passionate, yeah. Yeah, yeah he cared enough. <laughs> yeah, he cared enough to ring the workshop to tell me what a wanker I was. And it, he didn't. He hung up and then he rung back like 10 minutes later because he wanted to re- tell me his opinion. It was fantastic. But did you, um, did you get, I mean, speaking about Newcastle, obviously it was pretty much publicised that, that you guys were going to get spoken to or sent a letter. Um, you the the, uh, the um, team owners got sent a letter, um, which... They relayed onto the drivers, so it wasn't. It didn't come from supercars directly. But does but that? But does that? Like, I guess effectively, what I'm saying is, you, that letter, and then the team owners come and talk to you. Your boss comes and speaks to you and says, "Just settle down. Make sure you don't do this." No, I don't care. No, it's I, like if I hit someone on the track. 
and they and you get fined for it. It's like, I'll still do it again. I'm, pr- I'm pretty sure the day <laughs> after that letter came out, Betty put the post with the can of lift on the, her social media. The, the, so she obviously didn't take all that much, uh, pay yeah, all that much well, attention when to I've the got, email. When I've got her as my boss, I can do yeah, no wrong. I think you'll be okay. But she, 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 unfortunately, Betty came into the sport pretty much as I was walking out the door. She yeah, was walking you missed in. that area. Yeah. Because I, I remember sitting around her boardroom table and, you know, being a sort of a, what was I? The, the wedding celebrant. <laughs> to Ross and Jimmy and Betty, bringing yeah, them right. together. So um, I, I didn't have very much of Betty, but Betty is a great example of somebody the sport desperately needs mm. and should be promoting. And yeah, she's and super authentic. Yeah, she's abs- and the fans get that. Yeah, yeah. and they, they love they her relate, for it. They relate to it. Absolutely. They absolutely love her for it. So um, you know, you guys winning a Bathurst is kind of worth four Bathursts for our. For a little triple eight, like yeah, yeah. Because you know, for a triple eight, it's expected. But for you guys, it's like punch you above your weight. Yeah, so Aussies love that. Mm. So you know, you're you're sort of, you know, pretty cool, and 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 the team's pretty cool for that. And that's mm. what you want to, you know. Yeah. That, I mean, I remember when Gary won Bathurst. God, it was two thousand one. It, it was. I reckon it was. Tandrum, yeah, Tandrum, yeah, 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 and and it's huge. It was just massive, huge. Because yeah. no one expected it. Yeah, so it's it's kind of like. Even bigger than Ben Hur. Yeah, we, yeah. an, we love an underdog story, don't we? Yeah, Australia, absolutely. Really. Australia, that, uh, quite right. And, and you want to sort of have more of that, not less of it, yeah. in the sport. In every sport, by the way. Every sport, yes. So when the Gold Coast Suns win the yep. Premiership. Next year? Uh, no, <laughs> I reckon we're probably, I reckon we'll be in the window um, in the next three years. Three years. Three to four years, yeah. So, so uh, we're, we're, when, we're, when we do, we're, everybody in Australia will be supporting us because we're seen as the underdog and versus who happens. we're playing. Whenever we're, there, there'll be nobody supporting the other team other than their diehard supporters. <laughs> but what happens in between now and then? That, that's what I you guess. You work at it. You see, the thing that people don't get and probably where AFL media in particular don't get me perhaps is that it's, it, it's a huge task. You've got a brand new team in a non-AFL environment, it takes a lot of time. You've got to get everything right, and they got away to a shocking start for a whole variety of reasons, some of which were their fault, some of which were completely out of their domain. And I won't give up until I've helped find them success. And, you know, footy clubs are actually quite simple. Well, this is my theory. Great footy clubs are about great people, and it's just taken me a lot longer. But the we've got a great, great same team around team. Got really yeah, same. So we've got great people now in that club, and you know the as results will come. The players, well, yeah, you've got to have you know management there's, players. There's a hundred, roughly 150 people in an AFL club. So it's, they've all got to sing the same big, song. Yeah, they've, they've all got to march the same all, beat. You know, you've got to have the right people, and we've got great coaches now. Stewie Jew is an absolute. You know, find Mark Evans, our CEO, outstanding um, job he's doing, and John Haynes, the head of football. So th- you've got to have the right people in place. And and I don't mind people putting shit on me about, oh, you're still down the bottom, mate, you know, bloody hopeless, and all of those sort of comments because you're still our, new to it. So. It just our day will come. It. Our yeah. day will come. And, you know, in the That's meantime, the glory, I mean, right? for me, it's, a, it's an honorary. You know, if you're president of an AFL club, it's an honorary role. It's not, you don't get paid for that and you give up plenty of time. But I'm happy to do it because I want to see AFL be successful in Queensland and, and certainly on the Gold Coast. Because I grew up in Adelaide and AFL was my sport as a kid. So um, it's, it's a rare opportunity in life to give back. To be, yeah, be a part of something well, special. You're lucky. You're in a fortunate position. You can. And that's true. Yeah, I, I am in a fortunate position where I can afford A, the time and... And B, I can afford to, to do, know, it, yeah. do it. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, um, but that's part of you know, I think that's part of the social conscience of giving back. If somebody can, that's great. Yeah. You know, and hopefully one day you'll be doing the same in motorsport. If some you hopefully if I get the opportunity, if yeah, you get the opportunity. Yeah. If I'm bored so, and rich enough. <laughs> if, you're, if, you're, if, you're, if you're bored and rich enough, I'm not bored. <laughs> the balling rich. Like, oh, you know, balling rich. Sorry, I thought you said bored and rich. Well, Sorry. same. Yeah. Well, yeah. No, you could look at <laughs> so, that way. Yeah. So I can't imagine you being bored. But anyway, it probably will happen. I, one. I wanted to ask you: Is it true the story oh, that oh, you? Oh, is it true? <laughs> is it true that you slept uh, oh, on the same floor? <laughs> the <laughs> the program. The program slid sideways <laughs> very quickly. <laughs> spike now. Yeah, it's a big yeah. spike. No, but is it true that you slept on the same same floor as Frank Sinatra to try to convince him to come here to Australia? 
No. So what's true is that um, really early in the piece, when I first brought Sinatra out for the opening of Century Cove, uh, I got knocked back by his management group and I was in LA and I went uh, his manager's office in those days was in Fort Lauderdale. I went to Fort Lauderdale uh, on the Sunday to check out the office. I walked in there on the Monday morning and said, I, I'm, I'm here to see his manager. And um, they said, you know, no, you haven't got an appointment, um, sort of, and he's indicated already he's not interested in coming to Australia. So I um, fronted up at the office every day for the whole of that week and finally got in to his manager at 2 o'clock on the Friday. So I just refused to give up. That's but I, I was, you know, I was young. I was 33. I didn't have anything else to do. I mean, that's pretty cool, though. The dedication. I mean, and I guess that's something that you've, You've sort of carried out, like you said, through your yeah, so career, people, you know, that constantly keep punching until it um, until it happens. Yeah, so people who have worked with me, who I've driven nuts over a long period of time, <laughs> I will say <laughs> he just is incredibly loyal and he'll stick to something and keep going and keep going until he makes it work. He just will refuse to walk away. And... Uh, I, I personally see that as a as a good trait. Some people don't. Some people say, you know, you're a mug um, hanging in there. But you're a mug. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I don't mind. That's how. It's just how I am. It's how I'm wired. I can't be wired any other way. You know, I'll. Um, it's relentless. like loyalty to me. I'm incredibly loyal. If people are loyal back to me. I'm. Yeah, that's great. Incredibly well, that's loyal. Good, yeah. But um, it's just yeah. It's just how I'm wired. It's how I do shit. I read the other day that you're. Um I read in some article you were talking about a soft cap for some of the teams. Ah, oh, well, I was just like, because obviously so the Bruce Newton, out of Bruce control. Newton has been a p- pretty good journo, I reckon. In yeah, Bruce is great. Yeah, your sport, uh, any motor journalist generally, and he's been at me for a while to do a one-on-one interview. So I finally agreed to do it and spend a bit of time with him. And he asked me out of sort of left field. He said, "Well, so if you were back running." V8s tomorrow, what would you do to try and sort out the famous P word mm-hmm. um, of parody? And I said, actually, I'd have I'd, one thing I've learned from the AFL industry, it's not a bad way of going. They have this soft cap. So, what you, is a soft cap? Well, they give you X amount of money to run your football department, yep. right? Excluding the player contracts, right? So, in that, you, you know, if, if you wanted to, you could go off and have a thousand people, right? But you can't spend more than X. Yep. And if you spend more than X, you then get fined and the fine goes up proportionally and, and becomes really significant to its 100%. Yep. So if you overspend, you know, 500000 you're going to pay 500000 in a fine. So it, it really stops people from overspending the soft cap in football. So you don't have an arms race. Mm-hmm. Because clearly if you had an arms race, Collingwood and West Coast Eagles and Richmond... They'd run away every year. Well, they'd be miles in front yeah. of everybody else because, you know, they'd have... They've got so much more money flowing into them than, say, you know, us down at the bottom at the Gold Coast Suns. Yep. Um, so I, what I suggested with motorsport, and, I, and he said, how would you make it work? I said, oh, I couldn't make it work, but I'd spend X amount of, you know, four months or six months, I'd get the right guy to go off and research it for me and I'd spend the money to find a way to do it. So I would I would get rid of all of this, you know, you know, I'd have you'd have still have to have basic things like the car can only weigh so much and, oh, and what have yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. But then I would control the arms race by saying per car, and I just picked the number. You obviously would need proper research into it. I said per car, you can only spend a million dollars a year on a car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you could have one great nine hundred ninety thousand dollar engineer and do all the rest for yeah, ten grand, yes. yeah. right? <laughs> or you could whatever you like. You can spend the million dollars any way you like, and I would put the the money into lots of bean counters, continually going to workshops and checking and making sure that the system wasn't being rorted. But and then I would have it a massive fine system if you were rorted. If you were rorted. Yeah. If you got caught, bang. Yeah. You but know. would you wipe people or would you just find them? Like what you know, if they What do you mean wipe people? Well, as in if they if they went over the cap and then were winning throughout the year, would you Well the first step you, the first step I think always has to be um a fine. Yep. So forget the quantum of the fine. Yeah. I if you're going to do a soft cap thing, you'd have to make the quantum pretty big. big. Yeah. So uh, it's a big deterrent. It's a big deterrent. But then the second step always has to be bang, you get caught a second time, you lose all your points for that year. Yeah. 
So you've got to make it so draconian that they go, oh, hang on, hang on, wait a minute, wait a minute. Guys. We don't want to make, we we make it think about ourselves. this. We're leading the championship. Do we really want to suddenly go from being first to being 24th on the grid? Yeah. Yeah, no, I just asked because, you know, there is obviously, you know, the up, up the higher end of the grid as you go. Those teams can afford more and more or they have a, you know, bigger bankroll. Well, you can't. So, no, but, you know, I don't, and I don't buy into this, you know, the bit of shit that's been going around since um, Penske got fined, whatever it was. I know, oh, before that, though, I mean, through all the greats, even when HRT were at their, their peak as well, they would have. They yeah, had everybody it. hates to be fined. I don't care if you're a trillionaire, you still hate to be fined. Really? But yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Of course you do. Of course you do. I still hate getting parking fines. Yeah. Well, and cool. what you can't afford them? Well, no. It's probably cheaper to get one in the city than to pay the um <laughs> pay the, the yeah. multi level ones. In, in Melbourne, <laughs> it's probably true. Um, but the the reality is, um, I think I still believe a fine's got to be the first step. Yeah. And then the second step has to be the dr- draconian step, which is okay. You've just lost half your team points for the year. Yeah. What what do you think about the fines that they've got recently, like um, with the whole Bathurst thing? You, you obviously watched that and saw the team order thing, and I don't want to get in. You might you know do a better the, you job know, explaining it than do me. Do you know? Here's the joke of it all. What in the honesty moment? Yeah, and of I course. can say this because I'm not involved in any team at all. Yeah. In the honesty moment, every team would have done that if they had thought of and got the chance. Probably, yeah. Yeah, you, know, you can all be. I love how well, I love won. how team owners after the event. Mm. Oh, oh we I would have do never done that. This mm. is absolutely disgraceful. Well, not if you knew it was going to be what it was. I mean, you would know the commercial arrangements are for some of the teams. Like they'd they'd be getting paid that what that fine ended up costing but for the, winning the joint. But in the heat of the moment, the last thing, the last thing that anybody would have thought about. Is was a the fine? Is a fine? Yeah. The, the, you, you're, you know what Bathurst is like. You've been there, both of you. Yeah. You, things are decisions are made in a split second. Mm. You know, they they see that opportunity and go, hey, hey, you know, don't tell Fabian to slow it down, but tell him to slow it down. Yeah. You know, <laughs> we don't know where the accident was. We have no idea where the safety car is. We're in a black hole here, right? <laughs> But hang on. I, see, I come from the perverse side of the world where I say, hey, how clever was that? In the heat of the moment, they actually devised a little plan that may have helped their lead car. Actually, and, and one of the really interesting things, when Shane Van Gisman was first questioned about it, if you go back and watch the telecast, he's actually not complaining about it because he says, oh, no, I, Garth, I, yeah, I, yeah, I, I, helped us. I, I had a great run into, you know, yeah. the, my refueling pit. So yeah, I, was, yeah. I was, it was cool. Yeah. Right? It's not only after when people have got to him, oh, yes, no, it was disgraceful, you know. Things yeah, should so. be done. Hurt, hurt our team enormously. So, look, the reality is those things happen in sport. They got fine. Was the fine big enough? Who, who knows? Who cares? I personally don't think it changed the result. Sorry. I mean, did it change the overall result? Yes, as in, you know, maybe the car that finished uh, fourth might have finished third. Maybe the car that finished ninth might have been seventh. You know, yes. But I, I don't think anybody would have caught. The it's hard one. to say. It's a, and you know what? Here's something really that I can guarantee you 100%. We will never know. No, never know. But if I was around him, probably would have crashed into him. <laughs> Well, firstly, you had to catch up to him. Um, well, I would have jumped him in that stop. He would have been behind me. So then he would have had to pass me. I, that's allegedly. true. Actually, that, that's true. Allegedly. But, you know, th- it's just sport, you know. Yeah, if, yeah. if only, if only this person had have done that and, you know, da 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 You know, you don't get to rewrite sport. No. The result is the result. No, that's and right. I, I actually don't think what they did was, sorry, that criminal. I hate, I hate to ruin them. Um, you know, everybody's vision of this. But uh, look, it w- they took advantage of a very weird situation. They were quick. They played their uh, chess pieces. They played correctly. their chess pieces brilliantly at the yeah. time. And I defy, if you really got people in a really, you know, if you got Betty in a quiet moment and said, Betty, if you could win Bathurst and you could have had exactly that moment. Oh, mate, we'd, we'd, we'd all do it because we've yeah, got a, correct. We're, we're passing the hat around trying to raise the money for it for next year. <laughs> I saw the swear jar. I saw yeah, the swear jar in the garage <laughs> in Newcastle. Yeah. But, I mean, look at the interest that whole thing's driven in the sport yeah, as well. Yeah, so it, when people say, oh, parody, this, the amount of people at the end of the season, like, thank God we can wipe the slate clean, start again next mm. year. 
like, as you, you touched on before, you don't, you don't want, want to wipe do the slate. You actually that? want you that controversy of Bathurst yeah. this year to roll into next year. The, the funny you don't want to sort of try and wipe it all away and go, oh, we're all squeaky clean now. There won't be any incident this year at Bathurst. Come to Bathurst. Every car's going to line up. They're all going to stay yeah, right yeah. behind each other all the yeah, whole race. It's just parade laps you're doing. Yeah. 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 That's <laughs> not what you want. I was talking to James Phelps from News Limited on the weekend, and he said the, the God, is he still going? numbers. He's still going. Mm, shit, the man, num- he must be 90. <laughs> but the numbers that are going for supercars at the moment through all their media properties is amazing. And he said they came for Bathurst and they've stayed for everything else. Whereas most years they come for Bathurst and, and then, then you'll see it sort of tailor off, off again. Yeah. But they're staying. And it's because it's the Fabian thing and then it's the engine thing and then it's the social media blow-ups and then it's it's just interest. People are yeah. into it. Yep. It's great. That's yeah, what and, I like. and it, because it adds a sort of human element to yeah. the whole thing. It adds, you know, the... The whole screw up factor, you yeah. know, and and people love that. They love that in sport all over the world. You know, who was the famous senior into the um, wog ball game? Who was the famous uh, um, uh, Liverpool? Was it Liverpool? The keeper who muffed up, couldn't oh, fumble yes. the ball. Um, what was his name? Carl um, Loris Carius. Yeah, in the, Karras, in the Champions yeah. League yeah, final. The, yeah. that, that just went off the Richter yeah. scale for the next six months. Yeah. I mean, just <laughs> talk about. Can we get some publicity? That, not that the um, that was. Um, Champions League, wasn't mm-hmm. it? Yeah, Champions Not League. Not that the Champions League need Needs publicity, it, yeah. but having said the but, oh, it just went to into the stratosphere, yeah, the yeah. numbers it drove and the TV show, our eyeballs it drove and everything yeah. else. So, yeah, I feel sorry for the poor goalie because, you know, he ended He's up... He's got to live with it for the rest of his life. Well, yeah. he ended up a dithering mess. I think, yeah. you know, he still... He plays, think, in, plays in Turkey now. I think, no, I think Turkey's he's sitting league. in a black room playing with Lego. <laughs> but, um, you know, the reality is it, it creates the shit and... People are interested in the shit. I the think it's been a track. good year for our sport. Yeah, really? Off- yeah, oh, I think it really has been. The off-track battle is sometimes more important than the on-track battle, I think. Yeah, you see, like you, the story you were telling me earlier that, you know, there was a threat boycott that if certain people got awarded trophies at last night's gala, award, half the room would have walked out. I you have to say, it. I would have loved that. I would have, I would have actually stood up in my speech and started, and I'd said, "By the way, this is the timing we're going to present the trophy. So, <laughs> so you've got your collected your purses and the silks that are going to leave. You're well, ready to walk yeah, out." They obviously didn't present it at all. Well, that's I did they? That was I the think big that's thing. a big mistake. Yeah, that's big what mistake. I was. I mean, that was pretty surprising when they present There's every year that I've gone. They've always um, that's presented the uh, champion, and then for that for this year. It's um yeah. But everyone loves Beth controversy. Gil- I mean, so. I'll be interested to hear what what they if anything's ever said or if there's any you know any discussion around it because it is a you know Bath is, is that's this is it. It's a pinnacle of our sport. It's so well, it's certainly one of the pinnacles, no question, and all those will be. Um, it's a special place. So that was one of my big, 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 big errors. Really, all in the piece because I stood up, made a goose of myself at a press conference <laughs> where I Ooh, said, I know this one. There, I, there I said, yeah. there's no, there's no. Somebody asked me a question about Bathurst because they knew that two leader were trying to steal Bathurst from uh, the V8 guys. And somebody said, um, so, but Bathurst is a sacred site, surely. And I said, there's no such thing as a sacred site for motorsport in Australia. <laughs> and that was, that was, that was very wrong there. Yeah. I was very wrong. No, yeah. I made a big, big, big blue. And I covered my blue for a number of years before I finally admitted at some other press conference one day, mm. look. I screwed that up. That was a mistake. But I'd won the war by then, so I was yeah, happy know, to be Vic- so Vic- gracious Vic- about that one. <laughs> Victors can always be gracious, <laughs> can't they? You know, uh, I've shut all over the other guy, so now I'm happy. You know, and, uh, I'm happy to admit my error. Uh, <laughs> well, thanks for coming along today, mate. It's um, no problem. It's been great to have you in. It, yeah, we've uh, we've had a great chat. Yeah. Uh, best of luck to you and the Suns. Thanks for that. And I all, need all and, the help I can get. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be watching with interest. And those one to two projects that you take on for uh, 2020. I'd be interested to uh, to see what you pick up there, mate. Thank and the bullet. Much. Enjoy I'll, the I'll, bullet as well. I do enjoy the bullet. The bullet's um, the bullet's a fun car. It's uh, um, supreme handling performance. Supreme supreme handling. What, what did you think of the looks of the of the supercars Mustang when it rolled out as a Mustang purist? Oh, well. Man. You know, it's just got screwed with, hasn't it's it, because of the, it, yeah. you know, roll car thing, of the future, roll yeah. cage and all of that. But having said that, if you gave me a choice, so you'll put up with the bullet the way it's presented on the grid in V8 supercars today versus it not being there, every day of the mm. week I yeah, want sure. it there. Every yeah. day of the week. Of I mean, I think it's fantastic. Yeah. And 
you know, I don't know why or how it can happen, but, you know, I'd have the Camaro out there too. If I was GM, I'd be just pushing that yeah, onto the grid. A lot of the get fans are asking for yeah, it. They are. Mm. Well, of course of they are because they love the because, spirit yeah. of all of that. Oh. They love the spirit of the GM Ford thing yeah. and the rivalry. Camaro and the, versus Mustang. You know, yeah, and all that. I, I, you know, I, I would have it out there tomorrow. I wouldn't worry about trying to attract manufacturer of C or D mm. or E or F or what have you. I'd, I'd just go to the manufacturer that is already producing something that's in competition to the... Mustang and, and make it happen. Yeah, get shit done. That's what I say. Get shit done. You know, uh, <laughs> Walt Disney had a great saying: "You can be a doer or a non-doer. I prefer being a doer." Um, yeah. I'm probably sometimes both. <laughs> <laughs> oh, with that, thanks again, mate. Pleasure. Thanks, Tony. Thanks, boys. Cheers. Cheers.